Yo, I'm Tom, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a professional premium artist website in WordPress. Creating an artist website in WordPress has really never been easier. You just get domain and hosting, log into WordPress, and import a WordPress theme designed specifically for artists. In this video, I'll be using a premium artist theme called Painter, which I think is one of the most professional artist themes on the market. But it also costs $169 per year or a one-time payment of $500 at the time of making this video. Slightly less if you use their 10% or 20% off coupons, which I'll leave a link to in the video description. If you don't have that kind of money, Astra has a free theme called Freelance Artist, as well as other premium artist themes called Painter Artist and Just Artist, I'll leave links to the artist theme demos in the video description so you can decide if you want to spend the money on Astra Pro or just go the free route and get one of their free themes. But no matter which theme you choose, free or premium, as long as it's Astra, you can use this video to make your website. Once you choose a theme, customizing it is super easy and is mostly point and click or drag and drop. You can edit any page by clicking edit with Elementor, change the text, change its size, you can add animations, change font families and theme colors, upload your logo and the site icon, also known as the favicon, which appears in your browser. Change background images, change your portfolio layout, add your work, and optimize them for Google by adding alt text. You can delete sections or add new ones like a two column layout or even a video. You can add pre-built blocks like a portfolio if you don't like the one used in your theme or change an entire page by adding a pre-designed page template. You can add or delete pages, add them to your navigation menu or rearrange them, customize the footer, social media icons and link them to your profiles, customize fields in your contact form control how your website appears in Google, make your site format nicely when it's shared on social media, set up Google Analytics so you can see stats about your visitors, and take backups so you don't lose your work. Sound good? Sweet. Let's get started. The first step to getting your website up and running is to get domain and hosting. I recommend Name Hero, and I'll leave a link to this page in the video description. It will be an affiliate link, which credits me the sale at no expense to you, which I really appreciate and helps me make these videos. Why do I recommend Name Hero? Well, first of all, because of speed. Speed is a ranking factor in Google. It makes your website faster, and it also makes your WordPress dashboard faster when uploading photos or working in your dashboard and designing your website. And it's just really good for user experience. Hosting is the number one factor in the WordPress optimization guide, and I just recommend joining the WordPress hosting Facebook group if you want unbiased opinions. I don't recommend SiteGround, Bluehost, HostGator, GoDaddy, Namecheap, or any of those cheap, low-quality hosts. NameHero also has really good Trustpilot reviews, mainly because their support is good. It's based out of Phoenix, Arizona and Lansing, Michigan, and they're just all around a good host as far as speed, security, and support, and they also use cPanel, which is very user-friendly. So I recommend the Turbo Cloud plan because as you upgrade plans, you get more RAM, which makes your site faster. The Turbo Cloud plan also comes with NVMe storage, which is faster than the regular SSD storage. It comes with a free domain name and Lightspeed, which is a very fast type of server. So this plan will make your website load very quickly. But if you're on a budget, you can do the Starter Cloud or the Plus Cloud plan. But I will do the Turbo Cloud in this example. Once you do that, then you can search for your domain name. It's probably just going to be your name if you're an artist, but I'll just add a few digits because I already have my domain name. Search for it, and here it is. It's free. So you can also use your existing domain if you have one here. And then just scroll down and you don't need any of these variations, so press continue. The way most hosting works, including Name Hero, is you get a really cheap price for the initial period you sign up for. If you can sign up for three years, not only do you get this really cheap initial price, but you also get a 33% discount. That's why I recommend at least doing two or three years if you can. Otherwise, if you're on a budget, you can do one year. You probably don't need any of these upgrades. As you can see, you get a free SSL to make your website secure, and then press continue. You don't need any of these upgrades either, except for ID protection if you want to prevent spam from flooding your inbox. 
So there we go, $265 is a really good deal for three years of fast hosting with good support and security, and they automatically apply a discount for you here. You can see the ID protection for the spam prevention is about $6 a year. And then all you have to do is pay for it. So go ahead and fill in your details, create a support pin, and create a password. So enter your credit card information here and agree to their terms of service. So once you're ready, go ahead and press check out. I already did this, so I'll see you on the next page. Once you're in your Name Hero account, you can browse the dashboard on the left and you can open up a ticket if you ever need help. But for now, we're going to click the hosting plan that you purchased and then click Login to cPanel. Then do a search for WordPress and find the WordPress Manager by Softaculous. Click Install a new copy. And make sure you're using the HTTPS version and leave the indirectory field blank. Now you're going to scroll down and change the site name to your actual name. You can also change the username and password as well as the email to your WordPress dashboard. Scroll down and you usually don't need to do anything else and click Install. Name Hero is going to provide you with your website domain as well as the login URL which you can click and it will take you into your WordPress dashboard where you can also see it's already using SSL. Before we start designing your website you're going to want to do a few things. Go to settings and reading and you're going to discourage search engines from indexing your site because you don't want Google to show your website while you're designing it. Just make sure that when you're done designing your website that you uncheck this option. Go ahead and save changes. Now go into your permalink settings and choose the post name option. This makes sure your permalinks or URLs are the page or post title which is much more user friendly. Go ahead and save changes. And now go into your plugin settings and delete these two plugins which automatically come installed in your WordPress installation but you really don't need. Then we're going to go into your pages and delete these two sample pages which also come built into the WordPress installation but you don't need. And we're also going to do the same thing for sample posts which is the hello world. You really don't need this so go ahead and delete it. Now we're going to import a WordPress theme. To do this go to plugins, add new, search for Astra, and install the starter templates plugin right here. Then go ahead and activate it and click see library. If you see a option to choose your page builder like Elementor or Gutenberg, I suggest Elementor because it's very user friendly. So some of these themes are built in Elementor, some of them are built in Gutenberg, but I generally recommend Elementor for your page builder. Once you do this, you can do a search for artist and you can filter by free or premium. So like I said, I use the premium painter theme and you can see that you can't import it yet because you need to purchase it, but you can preview all these themes by clicking preview site and just scrolling through the site and it's a live demo site so you can just use this to choose your theme. Astra also has some other themes for artists. This is a free theme called freelance artist and it has WooCommerce built in. If you're actually selling your artwork online, then you may want to choose this theme just because it has the pricing, the cart, checkout, and account pages, and it already has WooCommerce built into it. And it has a bunch of different categories here. So that is a free theme that you can choose if you like. And then there's another artist theme just called Artist. So this one is also really nice. Check it out if you want. But those are really the three artist themes that I recommend. And it's up to you if you want to spend the money on Astra Pro and get either Painter or this artist theme, or just go the free route and go with the freelance artist theme. But for this one, I really like the Painter theme, so I'm going to choose that. Then you're going to click Get Access and click Get Access here. Now you can scroll down and you can see the pricing. It's $169 per year at the time of making this video or $500 one time fee. Go ahead and click get started and click ultimate add-ons for Elementor. Proceed to checkout. 
I have a 10% off coupon, which I'll leave a link to in the video description. Otherwise, go ahead and check out with either PayPal, credit, or debit card. Once you do that, you're going to go into your Astra account, which is owned by Brainstorm Force. You're going to be redirected here, and you're going to go to Account Downloads. Then you're going to see the Premium Starter Templates plugin right here, and if you click it, you can download it. Once it's done downloading, then go back into your WordPress dashboard. Go to Plugins, Add New, and then go ahead and Upload Plugin at the top. Then choose File, select the file, and go ahead and install it. Then activate Plugin, and then once you do that, you can actually delete the Starter Templates plugin since you have the Premium one now. Go ahead and deactivate and delete it. Now you're going to go click See Library, do the same thing and search for artist. Now you have access to all these premium themes and prompt you to get your license key. Go back to your Brainstorm Force account, click account licenses, and you're gonna see the premium starter templates license right here. Go ahead and copy it and then paste it into the activate license area. There you go, license is activated and now you have access to all these premium themes and now you can see that you have the option to import the complete site. So we're gonna go ahead and do that and you're gonna install everything. So make sure all these are selected and click import. Once it's done importing, you can view site and you can see your website now looks exactly like the theme. So congratulations. It already imported a complete site with the home, about page, artworks, and everything shown in the theme. Now let's get into the fun part, which is editing your website. To do this, go to the top and click Edit with Elementor. And now you can hover over any element and edit it. On the left hand side, you're going to see widgets for things like headings, images, text editor, videos, buttons, dividers, all of which you can click and drag and drop onto your website. Now we'll click the painter text and change it to my name, Tom Dupuis. And that is way too big and falls on two lines. So instead of editing the content right here, I am going to edit the styling right here. And now I can go to topography and change the size of the text. I can also change the font families, weights, styles, decorations, line height, and letter spacing. I can change the text color if I want to. And in the advanced tab, I can also change things like margins and padding. By default, you're going to see that if you try to change margins, all the top, right, bottom, and left are going to change together. To not make that happen, you have to click this and unlink the values, so that way you can actually change the top margin without changing everything else. And same thing with the padding, you're going to unlink the values and change the left padding. You can also do a motion effect or an animation. You can do like a fade in or a fade in down. So every single element or widget has a content style and advanced tab. Some of them are similar, some of them are a little different, but that is how you edit your widgets. You can always press Ctrl Z or Command Z on Mac if you want to undo changes. Feel free to play around because nothing updates in real time on your website unless you click the update button. And you can always preview changes here. So just like we did with the heading right here, we're going to point and click. And now we're going to change the text here and change it to world's best artist ever. So you can even edit this little divider here and change it from a solid line to a double. You can change the width and alignment. Just like the text and heading that we edited, we can also change the styling of that divider and change the weight, the color, the gap. Now we're going to head to the Advanced tab, and we can give the divider custom margins, padding, and all of that good stuff too. And now let's change the background image. To do that, go to the top, Go to the six dots and click Edit Section. Then we're going to go to Style. And this is the image that is currently being used as the background. You can upload your own image, 
but I want to use this black sand dunes photo that I found. If you need any ideas for background images, you can go to pexels.com. They're all free stock photos, but you can use them for background images too. I just did black sand dunes. This is a really nice background image, so I go to this right here. And I want to download the large one because the original is way too big. I know as artists you want to get the highest quality for your images, but anything over like 500 kilobytes or one megabyte especially is way too big and it will really slow down your website. Just make sure that not only with background images but your artwork too, that you're not uploading enormous photos. And I am going to download it. I'm going to go back to my website and I can upload it by going to Upload Files and upload it right here. You always want to make sure you're labeling your artwork and pretty much any image as the description instead of like IMG123. At least for Google and SEO, it helps them understand what your image is about. I already uploaded it, so it's found in the media library. So I can go to Insert Media. And just like that, I can change my background image. To change this overlay image, I can go to the background overlay right here, click this, and maybe you want to do a picture of you. You're just going to want to make sure that the background is transparent so you can see the rest of your website. So I found this image of Sarah. I inserted it here. There's Sarah. She is way too big. So what I'm going to want to do is go to the size and go to custom and then change the size right here. I can also change Sarah's opacity if I want to, or I can just delete Sarah altogether and use a custom overlay color. I personally like just the background image, so you can go ahead and press Control Z or undo. But you'll also notice that there's a lot of extra space on the top and bottom of this background image. To edit that, I'm going to go to Edit Section again, go to Advanced, and then I can change the padding here. This is the top padding, so I can go ahead and reduce that to maybe 50. And let's try doing the bottom padding as 100. I can do the same thing with the other headings. If you go click it and click Advanced, I can also change the padding and margins here. Just like I did earlier, you can change the text size. Pretty easy to change like text and padding. You can always delete sections if you don't want them. So if you're going to have a page about your portfolio anyway, which I'm assuming you are, and you don't want to show like any text here, you can just delete these by right clicking that pencil icon. And then we're going to move to this divider, which shouldn't be here because I just deleted the section. So I'll right click and press delete. If you ever want to add a duplicate section, so you can go right click the pencil and just click duplicate. And that will add another section. So now we're going to scroll down and go to the image gallery. Oh, and before I forget, this is a button, so if you want to link that to your portfolio page, whatever URL that is, you can do it here. And you can also change the styling, the button color, the hover color, and other things about the button if you want. Here is your gallery. To upload your own work, you're just going to delete everything and delete the gallery. You're going to click this upload icon right here and upload your photos. Just remember that to label your photos and give them a description before you upload them and that they're not too big that they will slow down your website. So I'm going to use the ones that were already there and press undo. Now I can change the slides to show. If I just want to show one image, I can click one. If I want to show eight images, I can click eight. I like three. I can also change the dots and arrows for the navigation. So right now you'll only see dots, but now I just added some arrows. And you can link them to the media files, or if you want to link when people click these images to a custom URL, this would probably be a separate page where you talk about that piece of art. You can do a custom URL and link each individual item. But I'm assuming most of you are just going to do the media file. And then if you want captions below your portfolio, you can just click caption. 
but you're going to notice that there are no captions here and to fix that you are going to click your gallery and give each image a caption so i'll just do artwork image give a few more some captions and give your artwork some unique captions for each one but now they're still not showing okay why is that well if you see very closely they're white so they're there, but the font color is white and you can't even see it. You are going to go to the Style tab, go to Caption, and you go to Text Color, and you can just put them as black, and now you'll see that the captions are actually there. You can also change the caption topography in images. You can change the spacing of your images if you like. You can also give them a border. So I can do Solid, and maybe I'll add five pixel width, give them a black border. And now just like that, your images have a nice little border around them, but you can also customize your navigation, the arrows and the dots right here. If you want to change the size, you can do that with the arrows. Same thing with the dots. You can put them on the inside of the gallery or on the outside. Just make sure if they're on the outside that you change the color not to white. For now, I'm gonna leave them as inside. Maybe make it a little easier to see by doing that. And you can also change all the good stuff right here, which you probably don't need for your gallery. If you ever want to copy your existing gallery, you can just right click this pencil icon and click copy and paste it to wherever you want. And you can have different sections if you have like watercolors or sculptures or different categories for your art. You can just create different galleries. You can create different pages in your navigation menu, which I'll show you. Have one for watercolors or sculptures or whatever you want. But that is pretty simple. I'm assuming most of you are going to have your own bio page, but if you want to create a little bio section right here, you can add it just like we edited other stuff on the page. You can just point and click, add your text right here, or right click and delete something. This is a little placeholder right here. Pretty simple. If I want to delete this section, since you're already going to have a bio page, you can just delete and delete and delete and it's gone. If you want to add it back, you can undo it, but for now I'm just going to delete it because most artists want their website to be simple, and I found that most of them have like a pretty small homepage just with their, you know, basic stuff. If you want to edit these sections, you can. Everything is pretty simple. It's as easy as like uploading your own photo. You can always change the width of the photo, and like I said, each widget has its own settings in the content style and advanced tab. So just make sure that you click it and you go through these tabs and customize it to however you want it. The theme already comes with an exhibitions page so you can either delete it or customize it on the home page. Now the bottom section is a little too big so we're gonna go to the edit section, go to advanced, and you're gonna edit the padding to be a little smaller on the bottom. That looks better. Now, if you ever want to add something, you can click the nine dots right here. And just like I mentioned earlier, you can drag and drop some text here or a heading or some images and a video if you want. You can also use this right here to create like a two column layout. And then from here, just click this and then add text. Click this section, the second column and add more text. Or you can delete that and do something like a video. And when you're ready to publish your changes, you can click the update button on the bottom left or preview them. And hopefully this gives you a better idea of how to customize your homepage. Now we're gonna edit your about page. To do this, just click about in the navigation menu and click edit Elementor, just like you would edit any page on your website. Now you already know how to do most stuff. You can point and click, add your own text, change the styling right here, change the background image by going to edit section right here, going to style, edit the background image as well as the background overlay, delete this divider if you want. You already know how to do most stuff. We're gonna scroll down and maybe we want to replace this yellow image with your own. To do that, click edit section right here. And just like you change the other background image, you would go to style. And here is the image that's currently being used. 
Now in the background overlay, we have some opacity, which you can adjust. And I am going to delete this biography heading just because we already have a heading at the top and I really don't feel that's necessary. And we're gonna delete this divider as well. Now we're gonna go ahead and click this image and upload your own photo of yourself. Or if you want to, you can click here and do a video. Then we're just gonna delete this. And you can delete these if you don't want them here. Pretty simple stuff. Otherwise, you can just edit the text. And here is your artwork, which you can just click and upload your own artwork here. I don't know why they put exhibitions on every single page. I don't feel it's necessary. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that, delete that. But what if we wanted to completely redesign this page and make it into a new template? You just go down and click Add Template at the bottom. And maybe we'll go to Popular, or we can just search for About. Maybe you want to do something like this. You can see that some of them are free and some of them you need Elementor Pro, but we'll just go with this free template and click Insert. And you might need to connect your Elementor account before you do this, but when you do and it's free, then you can literally just click and import any pre-designed template you want. So if you ever don't like something on your page and need some inspiration, browse through these Elementor templates right here. They also have a lot of blocks for an artist. You might want like a portfolio right here, but they have different templates for individual blocks as well as entire pages that you can import in one click. Very easy to get some inspiration from. And that is your about page. Now we're going to design your portfolio page. A lot of artists have different portfolio categories like watercolors and sculptures. It's really up to you if you want to show all of them on a single page, or maybe you want to have two portfolios on the page and add one underneath, and you can show multiple categories that way. Another option is to create a separate page for each portfolio category, and then use a drop-down menu in your navigation so each one links to its own page with a portfolio. The final option is to use a portfolio that has filters. Now you can see that each one just shows that specific category, and the first two options are definitely easier, but I will point you in the right direction if you want to do this. So let's start by creating a single portfolio. Go to your artwork page and click Edit with Elementor. Scroll down and you'll see that you already have a portfolio on this page. If you would like to add another one underneath, that is very easy to do. Just hover over this and copy this section right here. Scroll down and paste it underneath your first portfolio. So now you have the section and now we'll copy the actual portfolio and then paste it along underneath the section. You can change this to the other category that you want. And now you have two sections on one single page where you can show multiple portfolio categories. The other option is to create a drop-down menu so each portfolio has its own page. To do this, go ahead and go to the left here and click these three lines, and click Exit to Dashboard. Be sure to save changes if you need to. Click the WordPress icon, and then go to Plugins, Add New, and search for the Duplicate Page plugin. Find this plugin and install it then activate it. Now go to Pages on the left, and under the Artworks page, you're gonna click Duplicate This. And now you will have two Artworks pages. This draft is the duplicate. Click Quick Edit, and rename this to your other portfolio category. Be sure to also name the slug as the category, which is the URL. Now click Update, and go ahead and click Edit with Elementor. You're gonna rename the heading to the portfolio category. Now click the image gallery to edit it, 
and delete these photos and upload your own. And when you're done, click Publish. Click Have a Look. And go back into the Customizer, which you can also find in the top right here. Now click Menus. Click the menu right here. Click Add Items. And then add the watercolors to your navigation menu. The next step is to create a custom link and as the URL you're going to put the number sign. The link text should be your portfolio or whatever you want the main tab to be and then click add to menu. Now you're going to drag the main portfolio page to wherever you want in the navigation menu and then drag the subcategories underneath it like this so it creates a drop down menu. And do the same thing with your other portfolio categories. Once that's done, click Publish. And now you're going to see it created a drop-down menu. But why is it so white and you can't see anything? Well, we're going to need to fix something. Go back into the menu and click Back. Then go to Header Builder. Go to Transparent Header. Click on Design. And under Submenu Color, change the text link color to black. Click Update. And now you can actually see the text and both portfolio categories are in the drop down menu. So let's go to the Artworks page and click out of this. And now we can click Edit with Elementor. So scroll down, you already know how to customize the text and stuff. So now let's customize the image gallery. These have the same customization options that you used on the home page. You have your images right here. You can go ahead and delete them and then upload your own images. Go to upload files and upload them from your computer. I'm going to go ahead and go back and undo just so I have some photos to work with. And to edit this, if you ever see this light box and you don't want that to show, you can always click in between the photos and it won't show that light box. Now you can click the thumbnail size and we probably want them to full. You can adjust the columns right here and in the styling tab, you can adjust the spacing. You can add a border, add a solid border with a five pixel width and maybe make it black. You can also add captions right here and you can also click these six dots right here and adjust the width manually of the portfolio or just make it full width right here. And that is how you create a portfolio and customize it. Another option is to use Elementor's pre-built templates if you scroll all the way down and click add template. Then go to blocks then go to Portfolio, and you can see they have a bunch of different portfolio options here. Some of them are free, some of them are pro, but if you want to just click them and check them out, you can insert them in one click. And that is going to insert a portfolio if you need some new inspiration. If you want to use the portfolio with category filters, the first thing you're going to do is go into your Brainstorm Force account where you purchase Astra, and you're going to see the WP Portfolio plugin right here. Go ahead and download it. And once it's done downloading, go into your WordPress dashboard, then go to Plugins, Add New, go to Upload Plugin, choose File and upload the portfolio plugin that you just downloaded. So once you upload that portfolio plugin, I'm gonna leave a link to this YouTube tutorial which shows you how to work it. It's probably a little much to add to this one video since this one YouTube tutorial is 30 minutes long, but that is how you get started with using the WP Portfolio plugin. And that is how you create customize and design your portfolio page. Like I said, you can add it all on one single page, do the drop down menu, or do the WP portfolio plugin. It's really up to you. So what if we wanted to add a galleries or press page? Well, we're just going to duplicate one of our existing pages and turn it into a galleries or press page. To do that, you are going to make sure that you have a duplicate page plugin. If you haven't done that in the portfolio section of this video, 
just search for duplicate page and you can install this duplicate page plugin. But sometimes when you try to do it, which is this little option here, it doesn't copy the styling. So if that ever happens to you, you can install another plugin. I use the Yoast Duplicate Post plugin which pretty much does the same thing, only it adds this little clone option. Clone the page that has the closest design to what you want. Then click Quick Edit, and we're just gonna turn this into a galleries page. Click Status, Published, and Update. Then we're gonna do the same thing, only for a press page. Go to Clone, here's the draft that we cloned, click Quick Edit, and put in press. Go to status, published, and update. Now go to one of the pages that you duplicated, like galleries, and click edit with Elementor. We're going to rename this to galleries, and as always you can change the background, the fonts, and the overlay and all that. So since this is a page just with my galleries, I probably just want to delete most things in here. Then we're going to add a two column layout. Press this right here, select two columns, then go to the nine dots right here and click text editor and drag this into here. Then we're gonna do the same thing, click this option here and drag the text editor there. I'm just gonna borrow the galleries from one of the artists that I did work for a while ago and paste that here, and then copy this, and paste it here. If the styling is different whenever you copy and paste something, you can always just go to the text editor and then I'll show the HTML, select all, and just paste it that way. And then you can view the visual editor and add some spaces, click enter, and it should fix the formatting. Same thing with this, we're just gonna view the text and paste it. Click the visual tab, click enter here, then delete it, and that will fix the formatting. You can also turn this into a list. So if you just click this right here and turn them into a list, you can do that. So that is basically how you add some galleries that you're featured on, and you can do the same exact thing with the press page. When those are all ready to go, you can go ahead and click update. Now let's customize your contact page. You're going to go to that page and click edit with Elementor. Then you already know how to customize the text, the background, dividers, and overlay. Same thing with all this, you just point and click. If you want to make things smaller, like if your email address falls on two lines and you want it to show on one, you can change the topography here. And there are social media icons here which you can link to YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, whatever you want. You just point and click, change the icon, link it to your profile, and they already have social media icons built into your site right here, so I really don't need these to show up on my contact page. Now that is how you customize the left side, but this is an actual form, and we're going to edit it in a different area. So if you actually click this, you're gonna see that it uses WP Forms. To edit the actual contact form, make sure you save changes first, and then go to your contact page, and at the top you're going to see WP Forms. Then we're going to edit the contact form. You can just point and click, and change the label right here, make it required or not. In the Advanced tab, you can change the field size to make it smaller or larger. You can add a placeholder, like Jane Doe, and now go to the settings tab on the left. You can change the form name or the submit text button. Then if you go to the notifications tab, you can change where the contact form information is sent, the subject line, the from name. You can use these smart tags to just add the name field. So by default, instead of Alex555, which I'm not sure why is there, it will just use the name in the field. And there's multiple options here as well. Then if we go to confirmations, you can change whether they just get a text confirmation on the contact page, or if you want to link them to somewhere else or show a page, you can do that. You can customize the confirmation message here. And in the marketing tab, 
You can integrate the contact form with Constant Contact, and the other email services require a premium WP Forms account, but you probably don't need that. Otherwise, it's very easy to set up your contact form and customize everything, so that is how you customize your contact page. Now we're going to add a logo. Go to Customize, click on Header Builder, Site Identity and Logo, and you can upload your own logo here, or you can create one using Logo Maker without the E. It's very easy to create a logo. You'll create a new design. Watch the video tutorial if you like. You can click on the text icon right here and type in your name. Now we can change the coloring right here, but since the background color is dark, we're probably gonna want this as white. So we'll do that at the end, but for now we're going to change the font. We'll do a little handwriting to make it look fancy. Then click on any one you like, and we're gonna just change this to white. Go ahead and download it on the top right. You can do no thanks, don't pay for it. There's the logo maker. So now you can just rename this Tom Dupuis logo. Exit out. Go back into WordPress. Click the logo that you already have. Upload files and click on your logo. Go ahead and click select. And you can't really see it, so you can just skip cropping here. And now you can see that it's still not here, so we need to change the Retina logo as well. But it's still a little small, so we're going to drag the logo width to make it a little bigger. And that looks good. Now we can do the same thing for the site icon, which is this little browser icon you will see. You can click site icon and do the same thing if you need to create a site icon. We're just gonna go press TD and make it white. Go ahead and save changes and download the file. And we'll rename this to Tom Dupuy site icon. And go back into your WordPress customizer and upload the file for the site icon. Go ahead and select it. We're gonna skip cropping. And now in the browser, you'll see the TD. So that is how you upload a logo and site icon. Instead of changing individual fonts and colors on a page-by-page -page basis, you can also change them globally. To do this, go to Customize and go to Global. Click on Topography and you can change the base topography for all your text right here. So you'll see this is the text editor. This controls the main text here. You can change the font family, the size, the line height, go back, and you can do the same exact thing for headings. And if you go back, you can also change the theme colors. You can change the text color, the theme color, the color of links and the hover. And if you go back, you can also do the same thing for buttons. You can give your buttons a color or change the hover color to something like green which will look like this and give it some width, the border radius, which is the little underline right here. Change the font families for the button. And that is how you customize fonts and colors on a global basis. The theme customizer also lets you edit your header as well as your footer. There are a lot of options here, but click header builder and go to transparent header, click on design. And maybe we want to change the menu color. So right now it's white. So I can click this and maybe change it to red or another color. I'll keep it as white. And if you scroll down right here, you can change the opacity to make it lighter or darker. And maybe we want to change this to red. And that will make it so whatever page that the user is on is going to be red in the navigation menu. And here we can change this to something like black and that will turn the navigation menu to black. Now if you hover over this, you'll see nothing is there. Well, something is actually there, but it's black. And we will change the submenu color to white so we can actually see it. That looks better. And maybe we'll change this so it has a hover color. And to do that, we'll just click this and make it red. So now when we hover over it, it turns red. There's a lot of options in the header builder, but feel free to play around and you can always just clear 
by clicking the clear button right here. And nothing is permanent until you click publish changes. You can always just exit out, go back, and we're going to not save changes. Go back to the customizer, header builder, and we're gonna click on primary menu. Here you can edit the actual spacing of the menu right here in the submenu. So maybe you want that a little smaller. That's a little too small. So we'll add about 160. That looks a little better. We can give it a menu divider, which is this little line that you can barely see right here. You can go to design and change the divider size as well as the color. You can change the offset. So right now, this is what the drop down menu looks like. But if we increase this, it goes all the way down here. So maybe we would just want to change this to zero and leave it like that. And if we scroll down, there's a lot of other colors and options. Feel free to play around with your navigation menu and customize it to however you want. If we go back into the main theme customizer settings, we can go to footer builder and edit our footer here. Go to design. And maybe you want to change this background image with our own. So we're gonna go ahead and go to background, replace image. Here's one I found on pixels.com. I'm gonna insert that. And that already looks really cool. We can also remove that image and just use a solid color if we want to use something like blue. We can also add gradients. You can also customize the copyright section right here. If you wanna remove the powered by, you can just do that. And this will pull the current year so you don't have to constantly update it. This is the site title, which is my name right now. And maybe I want to go back and change the text color or the font size. And then if I click this pencil icon, I can edit the social media buttons right here. If I don't want dribble, I can just remove that. And I can change this to something like Facebook and add your Facebook profile URL here. You can change the icon. They have quite a few. We'll just change that to Facebook. Then if we go to design, you can actually customize the icon size as well as the spacing and make it look however you want. Now I'm gonna show you how to customize your navigation menu and add pages or reorder items or turn things into a drop-down menu. So first go to menus in the theme customizer and go to menus here. And here you can click and drag and reorder items, but I suggest using this reorder button, which makes it a lot easier with the arrows. You can put the about page first if you like, or do that. You can turn things into a drop down menu by adding a little indent. So here you'll use the right arrow. Watercolors is going to be a drop down from portfolio since it has the little indent here. If you wanna make it its own tab in the main navigation, you just click this arrow, but we're gonna leave it as a drop down here, like that. And to add pages to your navigation menu, you're gonna click done and add items. Here you can see all your pages. You do need to create a page before adding it to your navigation menu. So the first step is to create a page or duplicate it and make sure it's published. Once it's published, it will appear in this Pages tab, and then you can simply add it to your navigation menu or delete it, and that is pretty easy. In this step, I'll show you how to customize how your website appears in Google, mainly referring to the text here, as well as the description for each page on your website. And I will also show you how to make your content format nicely on Facebook. This looks okay, but we wanna maybe customize the image and text, the first step is to go into your WordPress dashboard and go to Plugins, Add New. Do a search for Rank Math, install the plugin, activate it, and you might be prompted to sign up for a Rank Math account, which is free. If you need to do that, go ahead and do it, then scroll down and click the Setup Wizard. Click Easy Setup. And you probably want to use a personal portfolio, but they have a few options here. The logo for Google, as you can see, a square image is preferred by search engines, and the transparent background doesn't look very good. So we're going to go back to Logo Maker, and first go to Shapes, and add a square. 
and drag this to 500 pixels. And then we're gonna change this to a white background. Now we're gonna add some text and type in your name. We're going to use the same font we did for the other logo and we'll drag this to 500 pixels to match the background. We're gonna drag that to the middle and make the text black. Now we can go ahead and download it, no thanks. Rename it to whatever you want. Exit out. Then go back into Rank Math and upload that logo. Use this file and scroll down. And the default social sharing image is this right here. If you don't specify it on a page, then this is the default image that will be used when people share your website on social media. The recommended image size is 1200 by 630 pixels. We're going to go to add or upload, and I already resized this image to match those dimensions, but if you need to, choose a piece of artwork or whatever you want the social sharing image to be, and make sure it's 1200 by 630. Use this file, save and continue. If you have Google Analytics or Search Console set up already, you can connect your Rank Math account, otherwise I'll be doing this in another step. You can choose to auto-update the plugin if you like, and then return to Dashboard. Now we'll go to Pages, and click your home page. Click Edit with Elementor. Now you'll see in the left section, the Rank Math plugin added an SEO section right here. Click it, and if you click the title right here, it will bring up an option to customize the title and the description of this page. So these are the titles as well as the description. So since we're editing the home page, you can do something like the official website of artist Ovi Chase, and you can give it a description, best artist in the world you will ever meet. This is a little too short. You can see the bars are still red, which means it's a little too short. So we're gonna add a little more text. You will probably buy my work if you see what I have to offer. Then once you do that, you can go to the social tab right here and upload a custom social sharing image for this page. So by default, since we already set this image, it will be used for every single page on your website. But if you want to change it for each page, you can just go to the social tab and go to add image and choose the one you want to use for that page. But we'll leave this as the default. And this is the title and the description that will be shared on social media. Here is the title, here is the description. By default, the title and description you use in Google will be used on Facebook and Twitter, but if you want to change it for Facebook, you can. Then we're going to exit out and click Update. Now if we go to our website and try to reshare it, you'll see the image is currently being used and it looks a lot better than the default image that we once had. It will take some time for Google to crawl your website and update your titles and description. It can take anywhere from a couple days to even a week, but give it some time and make sure that it's reflected in search results. In this step, we're going to install Google Analytics on your WordPress site so you can track visitors and learn more about them. Do a Google search for Google Analytics and click the first option. Log into your Google account, and you're going to be prompted to set up your account. You can just add your name here. I'm just gonna add artist name. Scroll down and click next. Property name can also be your name, artist name. And under advanced options, you're going to create a universal analytics property and paste your website here. Click next. You don't need to fill any of this out if you don't want to. We'll click create, accept the terms of service. And now we're gonna go into your WordPress dashboard and go into the Rank Math settings that you set up previously. Go to General Settings and Analytics and then connect your Rank Math account. Choose the same Google account. Give access to Rank Math and they don't store any of your data. They're very good about privacy. 
And then under analytics, go to account, find your profile, select the property, and select the view. Then click install analytics code and exclude logged in users since you probably don't want Google Analytics tracking you when you're logged in. Scroll down and click save changes. Now you can go to the analytics tab in rank math and see stats directly in your dashboard. It can take a few days for Google Analytics to start tracking, and you can also view your data directly inside Google Analytics. Just exit out of this, go to the Reports tab, and here you'll find Acquisition, Engagement, and a lot of other tabs. I'm going to show you a demo of this website just so you can get an idea of some data that you can see. Here we can see how many users were on the site in the last seven days. We can also change this. We can see the traffic channels and where people are coming from, whether it's organic search, direct if people are searching your website and going directly to it, social, referral links, the location of your visitors, what pages are visited the most, and what percent of your visitors are viewing your site on mobile, versus desktop, and tablet. There are a lot of very specific tabs. If you click through audience, acquisition, and behavior, there are literally so many tabs, but you really only need to use the home tab for your general stats, unless you really want to measure something. But if you want to know a specific metric that can actually help you improve your site, then do it. But otherwise, it's a very big program and you really don't need to know everything. Some demographics, you can enable the demographics and interest report and see what percent of your visitors are male or female or what age they are and get more stats about your mobile visitors. And there's a lot to cover, but that is how you set up Google Analytics and start tracking stats. The last thing you want to do is do a bunch of work on your website and lose it because something happens. To prevent this, you're going to want to take a backup. Go to the plugins menu and search for Updraft Plus. Install the plugin, activate it, scroll down, and click Settings. If you scroll down, you can take a backup on demand and just hit Backup Now. Or you can also go into the settings and change the backup frequency and connect it to something like Dropbox. Scroll down and save changes. You're going to be prompted to authorize access to Dropbox. Log into your account. Click complete setup. And now the backups will be taken in the folder that you specified in your Dropbox account. Now we're going to make your website load faster, which is a ranking factor in Google and is just really good for user experience. You can use gtmetrics.com to measure your site speed, but there's three things that are very easy to do, which I'm going to show you how to do now. Go into your WordPress dashboard and go to Elementor Settings and enable Optimized DOM Output, Improved Asset Loading, and Improved CSS Loading then scroll down and save changes. The next thing we'll do is go into your name here account and log into cPanel. Search for PHP and select PHP version. Right now we're using PHP 7.3, but faster PHP versions are available. So the higher the number, generally the faster. So you can either do 8.0 or 7.4. It all depends on what PHP versions are released at the time you're watching this video. Sometimes the newer ones are not compatible with themes or plugins. So to be safe, I'm going to click 7.4 and set as current. Then go back here and do a search for Hotlink and click Hotlink Protection. Go ahead and enable this, and this will prevent people from copying your images and pasting them on your website, which sucks up bandwidth and slows down your website. Go back, and now do a search for Cloudflare. Cloudflare is a free content delivery network. It helps with speed and security. Create your free account. Add site. Add your website here. Click Add Site. Select your plan. The free plan is all the way at the bottom right here and press continue. 
scroll down and press continue. Then they'll tell you to change name servers to Cloudflares. You're going to keep this page open and then go back into your name hero account right here. Go to domains, find your domain and click the three dots, manage name servers. And you're going to replace these name servers with Cloudflares. And then click change name servers. Now scroll down and click done check name servers. I already did this, but you should see a confirmation message and that will set up Cloudflare, which is good for both your speed and security. And the last thing we'll do to improve your speed is to install the Lightspeed Cache plugin. Install it here. Activate it. And now let's test your website again. That looks a lot better, and if you browse through your site, you will probably notice that it's way faster, and even in working in your WordPress dashboard, that it's probably faster there too. Now, if you're actually done designing your website and you want it to show in Google, then go back to reading and uncheck discouraged search engines from indexing the site, save changes, Remember when we did this in the beginning, just because you don't want Google to crawl your website while you're designing it? Well, now you do once you're done. And I also wanna point out that in the dashboard, if you have any updates, I suggest keeping your theme, plugins, and everything updated if you can. You may wanna take backups using the Updraft Plus, which I showed you how to do, just in case something goes wrong, but all the themes and plugins I showed you are very reliable. And you shouldn't have any issues doing this typically. And that is how you create a legit website in WordPress for artists. Now, if you still need help, you can join uh, some Facebook groups. There's one for Elementor, there's one for WordPress, or lots for WordPress, SEO, um, pretty much everything about creating websites and optimizing them or you can hire a developer. If you're looking the, the cheaper route, I work with a developer in Bangladesh and he works with Elementor and he's I've been working with him for seven years. I'll leave a link to his freelancer profile in the video description. You can hire him on freelancer.com. His name is Pranaya. But if you're looking for something completely custom, then I have a guy in the US who I work with named Cole he is based out of Newport, California. He is definitely more expensive, but if you're looking for something really custom, professional, and tailored, then I will leave a link to his email address in the video description as well. Otherwise, I hope this was helpful and peace out.